Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have opinions about Medjugorje? Does it get you upset? Do you think it's true? Do you think it's false? I think it's somewhere in between. It's pretty confusing. Personally, it's not something I buy into, and this was something that I decided long before I was a traditional Catholic. In fact, um, I heard one of the most scathing critiques from a Catholic answer source. It wasn't actually from, you know, some traditional Catholic YouTuber or something like that. But nonetheless, it's something that a lot of people adhere to and look to and look at the daily messages and so on and so forth. So I guess the real question is, I mean, um, is it is it a real apparition? Is it something that Catholics should be believing in? Is it something that, um, you know, we should be adhere- adhering to as Catholics? Well, Bishop Schneider has a opinion on it. And I think that he's a pretty good source of wisdom on Catholicism. And if I'm being honest, I do appreciate his measured critique of it here. And I think you will as well. So whether you're someone who adheres to it or does not adhere to it, perhaps this might be useful in trying to figure out this whole paradigm. Let's take a listen. Medjugorje is still... Uh, officially not recognized by the church as apparitions. It is recognized as a pilgrimage place, place of prayer. And this we have to distinguish. There are cases in the history of the church where there were alleged apparitions, but the church did not uh, made any judgment on such apparitions, but uh, abstained herself in some historical cases to pronounce herself and simply allowed people to pray there without saying that or um, approving an apparition. There, there are two cases in Germany, for example, from the recent time in the 20th century. This is Vigrad's Bad, where is now the, the seminary of the Fraternity of St. Peter and another Marienfried, both in the Diocese of Augsburg in Bavaria. And they were, after the Second World War, uh, two apparitions. Um, for, in, these are different places of Our Lady, alleged apparitions. And uh, there were written books and prayer books and uh, people came there and prayed and were believing that Our Lady appeared there and they had some messages. And the Bishop of those times simply tolerated this for several decades without pronouncing himself about the apparitions itself. He only, was, he only allowed them to pray. And they were very um, beneficent places. There was a lot of graces in these both places. I myself visited these places in my youth. And, and then in the 80th, 40 years after the apparitions, uh, another bishop already from this diocese, Augsburg, he made a official inquiry, a, a com- committee. They were examining uh, carefully both apparitions and uh, they came to the result in both cases that these apparitions were not supernaturally, or at least it was not sure that it is supernatural. But they said, uh, they established both places as diocesan shrines of Our Lady, even with the invocation um, uh, which there were before, uh, with the invocation, the name, which, which were in the apparitions, for example, in Vigradsbad, Our Lady of Victory, it remains, and in another place was another name. But the bishop said that that should not be in these places uh, um, preached that these apparitions 
have supernatural origin. So this was a solution. And now to the Medjugorje, it seems the same case still, because the Holy See did not yet publish an official report on the characters, on the alleged supernatural character of the apparitions. And But the Pope uh, named an uh, apostolic administrator, a bishop there, to take care for the pilgrims. And this is good when there is a, a care, pastoral care for those who can come there and pray and do penance. And I think it, it, it could be a solution to allow there a shrine for prayers and independently, if the church will say, if these apparitions in Medjugorje had a supernatural character or not, or simply an expression of the devotion of the so-called visionaries. Still, the RP, the last judgment of the Holy See is not yet published. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, I always, I tend to agree with Bishop Schneider a lot. The whole Medjugorje thing is very complicated. Um, on the one hand, there seem to be some huge red flags in the lives of the seers and some of the messages that are attributed to Our Lady. But at the same time, people do tend to go there and have these legitimate conversions, and I've seen them happen. On the other hand... There are people that go there seeming like they're apparition chasing, miracle chasing. There's some alchemical things people seem to look after. You know, I'm going to go there. My rosary is going to turn to gold. That seems kind of strange. But through all of that, there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, however many Catholics who go there with the intention of strengthening or demonstrating their supernatural faith and their love for the Virgin Mary. So I think the examples that Bishop Schneider gave of how in the past when there were places that there were shrines where there was no approval of the apparition per se, there was something set up just like a place of diocesan devotion. I guess the only difference there I would say is in those places, as far as I can tell, um, Our Lady of Victory is a name that Our Lady has had for a long time. Um, it's a very common thing. Whereas I don't know if the way that people refer to the Virgin Mary in Medjugorje is traditionally understood as a traditional name of Our Lady. I might be wrong on that. Um, you know, for example, uh, if someone says they see the Virgin Mary in southwestern Minnesota or something, and they say it was Our Lady of the Rosary, and then sort of a devotion to Our Lady of the Rosary pops, uh, pipes up around there, or pops up around there. Well, a devotion to Our Lady of the Rosary is a very old devotion, so in a sense it makes sense to erect a shrine that represents the devotion people have to a name of Our Lady. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, and the Bishop Schneider seems to think that having sort of an apostolic pastor there, an apostolic delegate, or whatever you want to call it, um, I don't think that's the correct term, but whatever the term is, to sort of oversee the Medjugorje thing. Well, if I'm being honest, I have to agree with the Pope that um, having someone from Rome that is overseeing what's going on is, generally speaking, pretty prudent because um, hearing a lot of stories about things that, things that go on at Medjugorje, um, there's a lot of weird stories. So having some oversight could probably stop some of the weirdness, some of the more... Uh, well, some of the complexities, let's put it that way. At the same time, having an apostolic oversight does not mean there's an approval of the apparition. It's just, generally speaking, an acknowledgement that it happens there, and therefore the church has something to say about how the affairs there ought to be governed, I guess. I don't know. If you're a Medjugorje lover, if you're not a Medjugorje lover, as always, let me know what you think in the comments. This has been the Kennedy Report. Until next time, God bless.